last batches of leeks. We've got about another three or four acres left to plant. We'll start planting in the middle of March and continue on planting a small amount every week uh, right through until um, I suppose the end of June, we get first week of July. Um, this is so that we have uh, continuity of supply throughout so they don't all come ready at once. We'll have uh, the earliest ones we plant in the middle of March will be ready for harvesting in, uh, in around the 12th of July. Normally we wait just until after the July holidays until we uh, we start we start to harvest lakes because at this time of the year we're also busy with spring onions. So um, just to spread the workload a wee bit, we'll wait until we're after uh, the 12th of July holidays and then we'll start the lakes. But those plants that we start planting in the middle of March are grown in uh, Morocco and then they're brought over here and we transplant them and cover them with fleece to protect them from any frost and uh, bad weather. So once we get the first two plantings in, they're both covered, um, then we'll move on to just planting, uh, planting in the open, like, like what you can see here today. These plants were actually grown in Holland, so the first couple of batches, the really early stuff, is grown in Morocco, and then we'll move on to uh, Dutch lakes which are grown by a, a, a supplier we have in Holland. Um, the lakes that we have today, they're fantastic. They're lovely, lovely size, nice and even, um, nice and healthy. They haven't been sitting too long in the boxes. They're, uh, they're just, they're ready to go. The ground we're planting into today is probably a little bit too dry, but um, it is what it is. We can't, uh, we can't always choose the weather, um, but uh, they should catch not too bad and if needs be we can always irrigate them if, if we have to. So the machine we're using here is a Bujaris uh, lake transplanter which is quite a simple machine. You've got a, a small conveyor belt which you set one lake on each flight of the conveyor belt. Then the belt uh, is driven from the wheels that run on the ground which uh, you, can, you can set your spacing differently by changing some cogs in the wheels and then the belt feeds them into two rubber discs which grab the plant and turn it around and set it into the, the trench which is made by the coulter and then there's two, two wheels just pack, pack in the soil around the, around the lake plants. So it's quite a simple machine. Um, we've had this for four years now, maybe, maybe three years, three years or four years now and uh, it seems to be working quite well. The soil condition is just pure sand um, with no stones and nice deep loam, loamy soil but uh, obviously not every field we have in Northern Ireland is like this and we've had to do a few modifications to it and beef it up a little bit to cope with the, the stony conditions we sometimes see um, but all in all it's a good a good planter it works well for us so as you'll see there's nobody driving this tractor um, we're using a Trimble RTK auto steer which is capable of working at very slow speeds we're planting at around uh, 400 metres an hour, so not 0.4 kilometres an hour. Um, it seems slow, but we're planting um, on a good long day. We'll plant about 100,000 plants um, with four people, which is, is quite good. You know, that's about an acre and a half. Um, and a good long run, we can, we can definitely do that. But the, the Tremble GPS is second to none. It, as you can see, the, the, the beds or the, the drills are just arrow straight and um, make sure we uh, we get as much as we can in every acre. So even though we have no one in the tractor we can stop it remotely from here if there's anything that goes wrong or whatever or as now we're coming to the end of the bed um, we just press a button and the tractor will stop. So today this variety that we're planting is Lexton. Uh, which grows to be uh, quite a long, straight, upright lake with a long white, um, which is perfect for our market because about 80% of the lakes that we uh, that we grow are sold as pre-packed, which means they're trimmed down to about 300 mil, um, about a foot long, and uh, the customer wants uh, about about a 70, 30 split so 70% of that needs to be white and 30% of that needs to be leaf 
and this Lexton variety was grown or was, was bred specifically for the pre pack market. Um, so this will be a later pre pack variety. So at the beginning of the season we'll start off with Krypton and Chieftain and then we'll move on to uh, the later the later maturing varieties like Lexton. We've, all, all the leeks that we grow are all Nunnums varieties. Um, Nunnums is the, is the seed house that, that breeds these, these varieties which is they've and over the last maybe 10 years have really stood out with their leek varieties so that's why we stick to their to their varieties. Um, so about half of the lakes that we grow are grown from plants like this, like what you're seeing here now, and they're transplanted. And then the other half, we direct drill into the soil. Um, the direct drilled stuff, uh, we will try and sow that just as early in the year as we can, as the conditions allow. And um, they'll be for harvesting sort of after Christmas. Um, the, the planted stuff takes us up to Christmas and maybe into January and then after that the, the sowed lakes follow on from that. The sowed lakes that we, that we sow ourselves are obviously much later in the season um, because obviously we don't have the, the nice warm climate early on in the summer to get them, get them up to the, this stage. Our sowed lakes at the moment are, you can barely see them in the field still. Um, but they're a very good crop this year. Uh, we've had good germination. I haven't too much uh, pressure from weeds, um, and that's going to be our biggest challenge in the in the coming years. Because uh, you know, as with everything in the vegetable side, all all, all types of agriculture, um, chemicals that we are able to use for uh, weed control are becoming less and less. So uh, your hands are tied in that respect. To, to some to some extent, so we've moved back to try a few more older techniques. Like for example, this year we made the drills up very early in the year and let them sit for maybe three, four weeks before we even sowed them. That allowed this, the weeds all to germinate and, and braid on top of the drills, and then we were able to spray them with Roundup to create a steel, steel seed bed. And then we planted and or we sowed the lakes into that, which um, gave the lakes a little head start against the weeds, which worked really well. We'll definitely be doing that again. Um, it just means you're a wee bit later sowing, but uh, whenever you don't have that competition from the weeds in the in the first sort of month of the lakes being in the ground, uh, you can soon make that time back up again. Elsewhere on the farm today, we're uh, irrigating our first. Uh, our first and second plantings of lakes, which are down at Island Hill. Um, it's been sort of, I would say, about a week to ten days since we've had any significant amount of rain, and there's none forecast this week. Um, and the, the problem with that is uh, those plants that are coming from Morocco, they have, it's stressful for them coming from the heat of Morocco into the, the temperature that, that we're putting, putting them into here. So uh, that, that's one stress factor on them already, and if they go through any, any sort of stress factor from, from drought, or uh, you know, if the nutrients aren't right, or the growing conditions aren't good, they just bolt, um, and then we can't sell them. So it's really important that we keep those lakes growing all the time. So that's why we've, we've had to irrigate them at the, mo at the moment. So, so yeah, we're irrigating down at Island Hill, which has been made quite handy because uh, the, uh, the people that had the field before us had, uh, had, a, had all the hard work done, they had pipe work right into the field um, from a water source, so um, it's, qu uh, it's quite easy, so that's why we're doing it. Um, and then also, uh, we're working away at spring onions at this time of the year. We've just, uh, last Friday, we started into our new season, uh, spring onions, which were sown at the beginning of this year, just as soon as it dried up. Um, and they are really, really nice crop of stuff. Probably as good a early spring onions as we've ever had. Um, and uh, yeah, no, we're glad to get started them. The overwintered spring onions that we had this year looked great all winter, but then early in the spring they started to take some disease, and um, very quickly they, they just they, they sort of they got quite difficult to work with. Um, so it's great to get to get into the new season stuff and uh, get some product coming up.